Jewish doctor Ludwig Fleck led a successful program to produce a working typist vaccine while being held prisoner at a Nazi concentration camp. He left a lasting legacy of bravery and scientific discovery, despite incredible hardship and personal danger. During the 1930s, Adolf Hitler and the Nazi Party seized control of Germany, a country nearly destroyed by World War I and the Great Depression. Along with widespread poverty and unemployment was the problem of disease. In particular, the poorly understood infection of typhus. At the start of World War II, Hitler portrayed typhus as a disease synonymous with the Jewish people. He created propaganda portraying them as vermin and spread the notion that typhus was a Jewish disease and they were racial carriers. He justified the imprisonment of Jewish people in ghettos as protection for the superior Aryan population. Typhus is caused by Rickettsia bacteria. This bacteria spread when a body louse bites a person, which causes itching and the need to scratch the bitten area. Scratching at the side of the bite damages the skin and allows bacteria to enter the bloodstream and cause infection. Some of the symptoms of typhus include chills, confusion, cough, delirium, hallucinations, high fever, joint pains, rash, severe headache, and even death. The typhus epidemic of World War II was due to poverty and unsanitary conditions many Germans faced under the Third Reich. Ludwig Fleck was born in Lwów, Poland in 1896 and raised in Austria. He graduated from medical school at age 18 and served in World War I for the Austro-Hungarian Empire. He was a medic in the Kaiser's army and first encountered typhus while treating patients in prisoner of war camps. After the war, he worked in a research lab and helped develop the skin test for the diagnosis of tuberculosis that is still used today. He received a doctorate for his work. He married Ernestina Waldman in 1923. She was from a wealthy family, and with her dowry, he bought himself a private laboratory that he worked in for the next 12 years. During the 1930s, the Nazis rose to power in Germany. Fleck increasingly felt excluded from circles of academic life, but he began to explore the philosophical examinations of science, which would later greatly impact his work and view on life. In 1935, he published his book, The Genesis and Development of a Scientific Fact. In 1942, Fleck was forced by the Nazis to move to the Lvov Ghetto, along with other Jewish people in the region. He continued his scientific work and made an important discovery of a technique to diagnose typhus from the urine of patients. Based on this idea, he found a way to concentrate the antigen to make a vaccine. After eight months of work, the vaccine was ready for human testing. He injected himself and received positive results. He then vaccinated 500 inmates in the ghetto, saving many lives. Even after the ghetto was sealed, he continued his research. Adolf Folkman, a fellow prisoner of the ghetto, said, Dr. Fleck produced his serum at the risk of his life and injected as many Jews as possible. In February 1943, Fleck and his assistants were taken to Auschwitz. When they boarded the train, Fleck bravely insisted that his assistant Anna Seaman be allowed to come as well, thus saving her life. Anna later commented, few people would have had the courage to behave the way he did in those evil circumstances. Fleck refused to be dehumanized. Fleck was selected and sent to Auschwitz to help Nazi doctors test for typhus, as thousands of cases had been reported in the camps. Despite his value as a scientist, Fleck was beaten by the guards and exposed to typhus. He witnessed the terrible experiments performed on prisoners in laboratories throughout the camp. Whenever possible, he changed the prisoners' test results from positive to negative to protect them from execution. Soon, though, the Nazis needed his expertise elsewhere. In December 1943, he was sent in a private car to the laboratory at Buchenwald led by Dr. Erwin Ding Schuler. Nazi doctors were failing at producing a typhus vaccine. They were afraid to create the massive louse farms needed to produce the vaccine directly. Instead, Dr. Ding Schuler infected prisoners with typhus and injected their blood sequentially into guinea pigs, followed by mice, and finally into rabbits. The rabbits were tortured with freezing cold temperatures and then killed when the bacteria was in the proper stage. If successful, one rabbit could immunize a hundred people, but the process was not working. When Fleck arrived at Buchenwald, he realized he was the only qualified immunologist. He determined that the scientists had misidentified the typhus germs under the microscope, leading them to wrongly conclude their vaccine was effective. 
Ding Schuler, desperate to impress his superiors, had already declared the vaccine a success. With Fleck as their leader, the scientists joined together and decided to keep the mistake a secret from Ding Schuler. Soon after, under Fleck's leadership, an effective vaccine was produced. But Fleck and his team were determined not to hand over a working vaccine to the Nazis who were holding them prisoner and slaughtering their fellow Jewish people. This was the beginning of the Buchenwald vaccine scam. Fleck and his team decided that they would produce two types of the vaccine. The first would be ineffective but perfectly harmless. This was the type of vaccine they gave to Ding Schuller to send to the German soldiers. The second vaccine was very effective and could prevent typhus. They made this vaccine in very small quantities and distributed it around the camp to fellow prisoners who worked under the harshest conditions. They marked these vials with a red dot to signify the importance. Dr. Ding Schuller had very little knowledge of immunology, so he remained ignorant to the entire scam. He basked in the praise he received from his superiors after sending dozens of liters of vaccine to Berlin. Because the vaccine was useless, soldiers at the front line continued to catch typhus. To prevent suspicion about the team's actions, Fleck provided Ding Schuller samples of the real vaccine, which was retested and validated independently both in Berlin and by the Pasteur Institute in Paris. This clever deception by Fleck erased all questions and protected the lives of the entire team at Buchenwald. The small team of scientists that knew about the scheme were inspired by Fleck's bravery and the leadership required to perform such a dangerous operation within a concentration camp. Most of the prisoners in Buchenwald, though, only cared about the leftover rabbit meat that Fleck generously smuggled to starving inmates. So even though Dr. Fleck was not protecting the German soldiers on the front line against typhus, he also was very careful not to infect them. He carefully searched every vial he was sending out to make sure that it was not contaminated. And when one of his colleagues tried to send a non-sterile vial, he intervened. He said, look, it's one thing not to protect the German soldiers. It's a very different thing to actually poison them. So what, what Dr. Fleck was actually doing was he was practicing nonviolent resistance just like Mahatma Gandhi. The second point was he is also the leader of all of the um, all of the vaccine physicians at Buchenwald and if all of a sudden hundreds of German soldiers were dying from contaminated vaccine he would be sentencing to death all of those physicians. Dr. Fleck has to be admired because he was able to navigate a clearly ethical course even when he was a prisoner of war, demonstrating remarkable moral courage. Fleck was able to continue the scheme until Buchenwald was liberated in April 1945. Ironically, the American doctors unknowingly used the fake Buchenwald vaccine to vaccinate all the Nazis, including the Nazi doctors who were being held as prisoners before the Nuremberg trials. It was during the Nuremberg trials that Dr. Ding Schuller and his superiors learned for the first time about the sabotage. They were outraged and proclaimed Fleck's actions unethical, which was met with laughter in the court. Dr. Ding Schuller's superiors were hung for their crimes, and Dr. Ding Schuller hung himself in a cell. Soon after, his wife died of typhus. After liberation, Fleck returned to the ruined Poland and worked as a researcher and professor of immunology at the University of Warsaw. He defended the principles of ethical research that were developed in the Nuremberg Code. In 1957, Fleck and his wife immigrated to Israel and joined a bacteriological research institute at Nesayona. He impressed his colleagues with his commitment to fighting diseases. David Nathan, a fellow scientist, said, He had suffered typhus. He knew what it was like. He had seen incredible suffering and helped people. And that was the main idea he brought to the institute, that we should be helping people. And it continued after he left. In 1961, Fleck died of a heart attack. Ludwig Fleck's leadership throughout his life instilled bravery and determination in those around him and left a lasting legacy in the field of medicine and in the standards of medical and personal morals.